Just a few days ago, I revealed that Andre, the CEO of Trap Nation, the YouTube channel with 11 million subscribers, has been involved with spreading malware over YouTube. The video itself attracted attention from media outlets such as Stony Road, Your EDM, and of course, Scarce. Trap Nation have also been threatening a lawsuit against me, which as I'm told, is currently in the works. I've been threatened by Karim the Hacker. I've also been threatened directly by Lizard Squad. My video has been disliked botted by hack forms, and they've also threatened to quote unquote, deal with me. I've also been offered a bribe of both 7,000 and 10, $10,000 for the removal of my video on two occasions, which I denied both times. Despite our differences, a YouTuber by the name of Glink actually did his own investigation into the YouTube EDM community and revealed even more corruption, particularly with another massive channel, No Copyright Sounds, which boasts over 10 million subscribers. I thought Glink did a fantastic job on the video and I couldn't have done a better job myself, so I actually decided to feature it on my channel so he can get the recognition he deserves for his work. 100% of this video's ad revenue will go directly to Glink and the artists who helped make the video possible. Recently, the YouTuber known as Vexed has brought to light a story that's been in the making for years. Andre, the head of the popular Trap Nation music channel and his involvement with a hacker known as Kareem has been exposed. Together, they have done a lot of sketchy things such as not paying artists under the channel as well as filing false copyright strikes against others. Vexed's source for all this info came from a man named Heck Yeah, a YouTuber who's been directly affiliated with Andre and his dealings in the past. Not long after his video, someone reached out to me with a lot of insider information regarding regarding this whole situation. Not only did I learn the kind of activities Andre and Trap Nation were involved with, but I also learned just how deep the rabbit hole goes and how many other channels and people are involved in this situation. Before I go any further, I want to make it clear that what I'm about to present in this video are allegations. I'm not claiming to have undeniable proof of these connections, but I'm calling into question some very suspicious things in the hopes that more insiders come out with the truth. But that's not to say there will be any lack of evidence in this video. Quite the contrary, there's a lot of things to present and a lot of things to go over, all of which I will do here. Also keep in mind that the channels and labels I'm attempting to expose here are worth millions of dollars and are working with thousands of artists. Naturally, I'm not going to have all the answers or the whole truth, but I am going to present to you some pretty vital information. As a little bit of recap, Vex's video showed that Andre, the founder of Trap Nation and its subsidiary channels, has been heavily involved with hacking. His involvement with the hacker Kareem is essential, as Kareem seems to be the main person responsible for multiple hackings and underhanded things they've done. In the aftermath of Vex's revealing video, Andre actually immediately responded with a comment on Vex's video, as well as a comment on his latest upload. A few news articles have also come out with the story, putting Trap Nation into a PR nightmare. So let's go ahead and analyze Andre's response because it's pretty revealing of his character and his intentions. He first introduces the situation as, quote, this whole hacking thing. Then, as a first order of business, he goes on to beg his viewers to not dislike the video as to protect his brand. Well, I guess we know where his priorities are. He would never want to hurt his brand or his channel, even if he's done some pretty deplorable things in the past. He then goes on to say that hurting such a brand also hurts the artist. He's essentially trying to hide behind the artist here as a means to cover his own ass. Those same artists, mind you, that he's been neglecting to pay and seems comfortable stepping over in order to grow his brand. And then, after a brief overview of X video, Andre's first defense for himself is that he's worked so hard, which actually isn't a defense at all. He goes on to tell this huge sob story about how hard he's worked and how sorry we should feel for him. Andre mentions how he's been working since 2011, how he had to wake up at 3 a.m. and go to school at 7, and basically he just goes on and on playing the victim. He's completely ignoring the the actual accusations made and is instead just garnering for sympathy begging for people to feel sorry for him, which is pretty pathetic. Andre ends his plea for sympathy by basically saying a lot of what Vex presented is untrue and how he's learned from the past, which to me just sounds kind of like an admission of guilt. Simply saying that a lot of what Vex said is untrue is an incredibly empty statement as well because in this whole paragraph he hasn't explained at all how the video and what it exposed was untrue, he basically just told a personal story. Here's a bit of advice for you Andre, next time just hire a lawyer or something, clearly you have no idea how to actually formulate a defense for yourself and you're lucky this is just a YouTube comment section and not the court of law because you would be fucked if it was. Moving on from there, there are actually a couple pieces of evidence Vext was willing to share with me to present in this video. This first piece of evidence I want to go over is a Skype call between Kareem, Andre, and Vext not long after Vext came out with the video. This conversation is over an hour long but there are two important parts of it that I want to highlight. The first is Kareem's admission of filing false copyright strikes. In this clip you can hear him admitting he's done this to other channels. I was watching the video with him and I realized you said he only did it to you like music YouTubers and 
that's completely incorrect because I actually started doing it with gaming YouTubers from like 2011. That's when I first started this. Doing this. And I actually managed to like inspire all these newcomers to start doing the same thing. You know, you get a lot of people doing the same shit now, giving false strikes and shit. And just. Fuck no, I just, I came up with it myself. Now, and how it came about was because every time I got a strike on my music channel, I was partnered with Omni Media at the time. And he kept asking me how I keep getting strikes and getting them removed because the network gets informed every time one of their partners gets a strike. And I was getting like three strikes, four strikes a week, and they were just asking me how I was getting rid of them. And I said I had a method. I just straight up told him. And to be fair, in the full context of this discussion, Kareem also claimed to have no longer been doing this. But nonetheless, this does show the type of things he's been involved with in the past and means that there could be more and there could be more stuff going on even now. Kareem has also been known as a DDoSer and even has current court cases regarding his online activities. In any case, filing false copyright strikes against others and maintaining copyrighted content by his methods of taking strikes off is clearly an exploitation of YouTube's copyright system and has been used against others. Later on in the same Skype call, you can clearly hear a bribe being offered to Vexed by both Kareem and Andre. He gave you the he gave him the fucking login. Dude. He's lying to you about so much shit. You made this video basically one well one to expose my past, which is like doesn't matter at this point, but also to help heck you. And it's like you can still heck help help him and shit like that. But most of the shit you're saying in the video is a basic lie at this point. Look about me, I, I accept the shit about me, but I don't want to look like a fucking retard right now because half of his shit is just. I, I, it, just made, can... it just made it seem like Andre's trying to take down YouTubers with 10k, 20k subs. Like, for what? Do I literally have receipts of me like paying thousands of dollars in charities? But that won't go in my video. How about he donates to a charity instead of giving you money to take it down? Donates to a charity under your name. You won't, I'm telling you, I'll donate 10 grand to any charity you want right now to take down the video and you won't do it. If you, if I donate 10 grand to a charity. Okay, deal. Just pick a charity. You just said deal, nigga. Oh my God. You, it, it's, why does it matter if it's tax deductible? I'm donating 10 grand to a charity. It's, it's the fact of me giving money to a person, to a charity. That could, that's actually going to do something with the money, not do it to a random person. It's not the fact of me losing money in my personal bank account. I could give $100,000 and do a tax deductible. It doesn't matter. Andre, do you agree to donate under his name? I'll donate under your name. $10, so you're at... So, look, you, you're basically... You know, <laughs> what? Dude, money is, is so invaluable really like it's paper dude it's literally nothing exactly well, that's why i don't give a fuck about the money i make this desperate plea to donate to a charity just shows andre's guilt in this situation he will do whatever it takes to try and seem like the good guy and have the voice of dissent silenced which in this case was Vex video. Now, one thing that Andre said does seem to be true, at least partially, is that Vex source, heck yeah, was lying and exaggerating about a few things. I know this because my source, who's actually worked directly with many artists and knows them personally, has pointed out a few flaws with heck yeah's statements. More about this will be revealed later in my interview with my source, but there is one more key piece of evidence I want to go over regarding Andre and Kareem. The following clip is actually Kareem's own recording. It's of him and Andre in a Skype call repeatedly calling someone who seems to have worked with Trap Nation. This recording highlights three very important things. Number one, Andre is clearly closely affiliated with Kareem. Number two, Andre and Kareem are both clearly okay with harassing others and being extremely unprofessional. And finally, number three, the Skype and Facebook friends of Kareem seen in this clip reveals just how deeply embedded he is in the industry, and it shows that this likely goes a lot deeper than just his involvement with Andre. $50. Where's my fifty dollars, man? Leave me the fuck alone, you little fucker. You come here and fucking mess with me, you gotta fucking get it! Cause I'm fucking calling the FBI, you little fuck! What the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? Oh my god! Oh, I'm done! I'm done! God. <laughs> what the fuck? Was Bro, that legit? Did you record?
record that pre-time yeah, did, before I did. I Yes! <laughs> you fucking man, dude. What the fuck? Yo, what's up, man? Hello. What the fuck do you want? Who are you? Are you are you Nick or are you his dad? Are you, you fucking Nick? call this fucking number one more fucking time, Ooh. and you know what? You don't even know what's fucking coming to you. What's gonna happen? Are you gonna fucking fly over to the UK and fucking kill me or something? I'm gonna call him one more time. Alright. Bro, he's fucked, man. He's fucked. He's so mad. Hey, what's his number? Wait, man, I'm gonna play K Flum. Why are you mad, bro? Alright. Ready? Go. Yeah, that sounds about right. Andre would be the type of person to blast GEZ or whatever that was while thinking he was an internet badass. Now, as I said, the friends list of Kareem in this clip is actually very revealing. During the interview with my source, he explained to me the names that were actually involved in the EDM district scene. Of course, this doesn't mean any of these individuals are bad people or have done anything wrong necessarily. What it does reveal is how well connected Kareem is and again, how deep this whole thing might go. The following is my interview with the source who's provided me with almost all of this information. I will be providing clips and screenshots verifying everything that we talk about. All right, so right now I'm joined by my source, the guy who's kind of turned me on to all of this. Um, his, um, his identity is actually gonna be kept sort of secret here because he's involved with the industry with a lot of the people and um, you know a lot of people, he's got people that he's working for and working with and um, his identity being revealed could potentially be an issue but we have a lot of uh verifiable stuff he's he's going to talk about a lot of the people he's reached out to um and a lot of the information we have and again the identities of a lot of people in this are going to be kept secret um for the very same reason that their jobs might be in jeopardy here um so go ahead and, and introduce yourself and kind of just how you're um a part Hello, of this whole uh, thing i'm i'm the secret source i primarily work as a behind the scenes a producer and engineer for a lot of uh, artists and a system in like business stuff and my duties generally are supportive so I usually am in touch with a lot of very different artists which are often in conflict with these promo channels and labels all right, so can you briefly walk me through um, kind of your involvement with Heck Yeah? And Heck Yeah, of course, is sort of the main source for Vex in his video and kind of spilled this whole thing open. Um, but you actually have known about this for, for years, right? Yeah, like um, when I started out as a producer, Heck Yeah was one of the first promoters that was actually supporting my work. So I've been personally like friends with him for a solid three years now mm -hmm. and I've uh, talked to him a lot about the uh, times when he lost his channel NBF which was the channel he owned before actively working on Hekia yeah in the state that it is now. Me and you both um, have actually seen this footage of Kareem and Andre both in a Skype call both basically harassing someone and what this revealed, well, number one, what it revealed was that both of them are kind of willing to work with each other and possibly do some underhanded stuff. But also, if you actually look at the friends list of the uh, of Kareem, which is, you know, who's recording this, uh, on Skype and on Facebook, uh, you can kind of see a lot of other people involved in this uh, industry that he's worked with. So clearly, he's a pretty deeply embedded person, or at least... There's reason to believe that um, there's Chill Nation on a Skype contacts as well as on his Facebook, um, who is also known as Kai Hunter. 
And then there's Correct. also, um, I believe his name is uh, Mike uh, Michael Par Parsberg, who is half of the popular EDM group uh, Pegboard, Pegboard Nerds, right? Yes. Uh, a promoter named Thomas Sweatshirt was also on his Facebook friend, um, friends who was like a promoter for EDM and all that. Um, Correct. And then we have Jason or Janice Highstand, who's a DJ, um, also involved in that whole scene. And then we have Ryan Beinkowski, also known as Drop the Baseline, a quite popular um, EDM drum and uh, EDM drum and bass producer. Um, he actually has five hundred thousand subscribers on YouTube, so he's a pretty well established person as well. Promoter, not producer. Oh, promoter. Okay, he's a promoter. And then Rossi Burr is the founder of the Disciple label, um, which you said has actually a, been pretty integral in cultivating many artists into working with some pretty major mainstream ones. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, it cultivated artists like Virtual Riot and Xyland, which uh, in their own right have touched artists like Skrillex. Right. Okay. And many other LA dubstep scene uh, people. Right. And so clearly the point with all of this is that Kareem is pretty well uh, networked with all these people. They don't, you know, they're not all necessarily working with him or whatever, but the point is he's deeply embedded in this thing and it's it's entirely possible he's done a lot of stuff um, that we don't even know about. Now, uh, Trap Nation has, of course, is of course affiliated and really just has subsidiary channels um, all over. And you could even see on their YouTube page, they have things like um base nation they have things like lowly palace um rnb uh nation it looks like so there's there's a lot of different you know avenues there's a lot of there's a big network of channels associated with trap nation it's not just trap nation um and then interestingly you pointed out to me that there was a comment actually on uh one of the lowly palace videos where trap city another group right is that a different that's a different group than trap nation completely it's a different promoter which is just friendly with trap nation as far as i am aware right and the significance of the comment um was that he you know just to confirm that all these channels are affiliated with andre uh he said good luck with the label andre you deserve every success and wish you the best bro uh on one of the videos of lowly nation you were also mentioning uh that lowly nation and maybe some of these other channels could possibly be affected by some botting in terms of views and all that or definitely artificially inflated views i obviously cannot confirm that it's botting or exactly 100 percent related but mm -hmm. it's extremely plausible at this point right um and so in kind of getting this whole story together you've gone out and tried to contact a lot of people involved with this, try to get people to speak forward. And you were kind of telling me how, number one, it's hard to get people to even come forward with this, which is kind of understandable because what, this is like their main, this is the only way they can really get their music out or what, what's the, what was the problem you were facing with that? Uh, the main, the main thing for artists nowadays is that their music mm -hmm. is generally not pushed by their own like social network. They usually make a song and then use a sort of aggregate, social aggregate, mm. like Trap Nation or No Copyright Sounds or whatever, to get their music out there and then hope that people will check it out, listen to it on Spotify, maybe buy it on iTunes, and they make their money that way. And then the promotional channels that they use will generally monetize all the YouTube views. And sometimes they'll act as a label and take a share of the Spotify and uh, sales too. Also included in that in that video uh, between Andre and Kareem, you can also see uh, N Billy NCS, and NCS is a part of the non copyright music, uh, non copyright sound, which is another um, kind of label. They're an actual label uh, where NCS comes to the picture is that they themselves have also been accused many times of not paying their artists, and many artists have come out and kind of said not come out, but they've said in sort of quiet that you know they're not really being paid and so to further connecting ncs uh, which is billy woodford's organization and trap nation um, there actually was a promotion done from ncs uh, of heck yeah um, and this was around the same time that he was uh, having involvement with ncs and so you know the, the fact that number one 
NCS was on Kareem's friends list. They were both, both NCS and Trap Nation were both promoting Heck Yeah at the same time. Um, is that correct? Uh, yes, Trap Nation has not been like cited promoting Heck Yeah, but they've definitely both been involved with helping Heck Yeah out, trying to grow his channel when he still had NBF. Well, this friend of yours that you contacted, who said that between me and you, the EDM district is garbage anyways, just a fucking mafia in reality. He led you to this artist with uh, a video that has, you know, 8 million views, a song, a popular song of his. And he was actually, he himself was being unpaid. But when you confronted him, he wasn't willing to talk about it. Is that true? Yes. All right. He seemed absolutely disinterested in any form of confrontation about this. And you were telling me that's a kind of a common thing amongst a lot of these people, that they were kind of admitting that, you know, there's something up, that they're not being paid, but they weren't willing to fully come forward. Yes, because uh, in general, it's just, it's the only way to get out there. Mm -hmm. Unless like some big YouTuber like somehow picks it up, but they usually search for no copyright music on YouTube and get the first thing there. So it is very hard for any artist to get out there in any form so they rely on these channels and if they get give them a bad deal that's like the only hand they've been given it sounds like there's been some situations with billy uh billy woodford who is the sort of founder of ncs where they're not paying people and obviously we can't show some of these screenshots just for confidentiality reasons, but could you kind of explain um, a couple situations in which this happened? There, there's many situations that I personally have experienced. Like I know people that have like released with no copyright sounds and have like expressed distress with them, but also people that I've directly worked with have uh, had with Billy directly that when they deal with him directly, mm. there's always a big like almost haggling nature to uh, not even haggling almost scammy nature to the conversation uh asking extremely low prices for doing a song for like official remixes and doing going to rather extreme ends to like avoid giving contracts just overall not paying people for extremely long amounts of times often taking months if not years next to just having an extreme reputation across the entire scene that he doesn't pay people one other person you reached out to um, wasn't an artist but actually was kind of closely involved or connected with um billy is that correct and um yeah yeah a person who is very involved with business inside of the edm industry right and um he was cited as saying in the screenshot that Billy would, didn't doesn't pay anyone, um, and he it seems like he doesn't really want to talk about it really once again. But he did kind of briefly mention, yeah, it, you know, there's something there, um, which again seems to be a pattern with all of these people he reached out to. If I would make a educated guesstimate, if you could call it like that, mm. I would say that there's definitely hundreds of thousands of dollars not being paid out to artists which is definitely putting the livelihood of many people at risk just because people apparently like to live in LA. <laughs> I, get, I get that they're running a business, but it's very disappointing to witness every time. Um, I hope that you know things in the future work out well for you and any other artists involved. And um, yeah, thank you for, for helping me out with this. What's also pretty unsettling is that NCS has announced that they will be sponsoring TwitchCon. Clearly this shows that they are a pretty well established organization if they have a connection like that. And perhaps it's fitting that this comes full circle with them being now tied to a company that I know all too well. I would hope that if more things come to light that Twitch decides against allowing NCS to sponsor their convention, but only time will tell. My main intention with this video was to get the voice of my source as well as any others who have been wronged by both NCS and Trap Nation to be heard. If you are an artist who's been dealing with this corruption but are too afraid to risk losing your promotions, I hope both my video and Vex might allow you to come forward. As always, this has been Glink. Thank you guys for watching, and if you enjoy, leave me a like and consider subscribing. See you guys next time.
Thank you, Glink, for the fantastic research into the EDM community. Glink makes very similar videos to mine, so I would highly recommend you guys go subscribe to his channel. We strongly urge any members of the EDM community who know of corruption to come forward with information. Despite the threatened lawsuit, we will not stop with whistleblowing in the YouTube community.